okay so now let us uh, start so last time we have seen uh, the windows and its uh, you know utilities correct right so now today we are discussing about uh, some other features of windows okay normally how many types of windows operating system we have hmm? which is like desktop a, based on like a desktop or you know in home edition so or, do with yeah yeah something, additional pro and, uh, something like that correct right and another one is uh, you just consider it as server correct right which is a server OS. correct right okay this regularly what we use like you know windows 7 windows 8 8.1 10 whatever we are using as of now okay this is windows 10 okay so this particular thing it's like you know you see it regularly nothing to worry about all these things okay you know them many of the features and all okay what what and all you can do see if i want the ip address for this computer i'll just go here Correct, right? Okay, just click on this. Okay, okay. Uh, change adapter options. Yeah, this one. Okay, go here. So I have so many virtual machines installed on this computer. Uh, let me know if I am not properly audible. Okay, okay, let it be. So here, Wi Fi. Okay, properties. Okay, so these are all my configurations. Okay, all these things. Okay. Uh, I have clearly set my DNS is my like whatever my default gateway and everything is through my router. That's why obtain IP automatically, obtain DNS automatically. If I have anything, not only the web browsing, so many applications like, you know, internally, which are trying to reach some, 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 some domains in the, in the external world domains means what? some domains it, they are trying to reach domains what is meant by domain okay see simplest way what you have to remember is domain is a name for you to remember but apart from that it has got some other important analogy which you have to remember okay what it is this is your office okay example it is amazon office Okay, even though, even though it is like someone tries to enter, okay, from the internet, okay, they 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 are trying to reach Amazon.com or Amazon domain, okay, domain, domain. Why we are saying is their computer, their computer, which is like serving this particular web page or something is belongs okay give me a second okay belongs to this one of the particular you know uh give me a second where it is home home, home. yeah this could be somewhere sitting here some computer some server okay is this Amazon domain only one 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 server no they might be having you know billing servers you know uh, something related to you know some um, their uh, database servers will be there some of them are you know proxies will be there some of them are like some people who are developing those products will be there like amazon website properly they are developing right those guys will also be everyone is there but this is one particular you know something called as amazon domain means the entire thing in that particular thing, website is hosted here. Got it right? And people from the internet can actually reach this domain. Reach this domain. After reaching into the domain, if they want HTTPS, HTTP, that says that, oh, he wants to reach 
the website which is hosted got it right website which is hosted so automatically it will be redirected oh they want to reach file server okay automatically it will be reached oh they want to reach you know some uh, cart or something like that okay automatically reaches there in the domain the the there are various services available and there are services not only the servers these are all servers these are all servers but also endpoints like you know my computer windows 10 windows 7 just normal linux some normal windows or something like that got it right so those are all called as workstations those are all called as work stations these are all these are all called as workstations. Ah, uh, one minute, guys. One minute. Yesterday, I thought of showing you one important diagram. Yeah, this one. I have created this yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Something fishy. Give me a second. Okay. So, someone is trying to enter through the internet. Anyhow, you are connected through to your operator and your operator is connected to internet or within internet itself, your operator is there. Whatever the case, this is your entry point. This is your entry point. This particular thing is your entry point. Okay. So, okay, let me move this. Okay. Okay. Ah. This is your entry point. You will enter into this particular office. As soon as when you enter into this office, this is called as router. What router it is? Perimeter is it, router. Yeah, edge router. Means it is edge of your company. Correct, right? Very edge of the, your company. Means all main entire traffic that is going into the internet coming in, we call it as edge router, okay? And beyond to that, usually you'll be having the perimeter, perimeter, okay? Perimeter firewall, okay? This is like, you know, perimeter, all this. After, like from, from this part, not this part, from this part, this entire thing, okay? Is perimeter, okay? Even this also includes sometimes under perimeter only. Yeah, these are all perimeter, okay? Till here. These are all internal, okay? And these are all internal, internal network, okay? So, entire this thing is your domain. Remember, entire this thing is domain. It's not like your web server, website name. It is like, you know, DNS domain name, subsystem, we say it is, okay? For HTTP also, it is there. For FTPs also, it is there. For lot many things, mm -hmm. this entire thing is one domain. Okay, or people can segregate like this is one domain, this is another domain, this is another domain. Okay, they are all comes under one bigger domain. They might be coming under one bigger domain. Okay, this might be Amazon.com domain. All the websites are here. This might be, you know, internally for all these things, you know, internal.amazon.com could be some servers might be there. This might be like, you know, HR dot amazon.com could be some uh, domain they have created okay some domains will be there a company is consist of one or more domains okay is that particular thing clear for you guys first thing yes okay a company an organization network logically divided into multiple domains okay say it could be they want to keep all hr under one you know domain they want to keep sales people under one domain they want to keep their business operations under one domain okay so think in that particular way 
okay even though it is entirely one big organization okay they might be like you know logically what i mean to say means not physically like this okay logically these three computers uh, might be belongs to one domain got it right okay they should be able to you know access only the data within that domain okay or these guys might be belongs to some other domain okay so logically they are divided into so many domains okay just remember like that okay now let us see okay i have created one server okay oh yeah okay oh sorry okay this is the windows server okay this freely available <clears throat> you have you can go and install it by downloading it from um <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> what is that website uh, windows uh, microsoft.com uh, where just give microsoft um, windows server 2019 virtual machine or something like that you can give they'll be providing you that you can download it and you can start using it. just launch you know you just have to use it in a way that um just some small small features uh, i'll be sharing few links where you can learn how to install how to you know do other things which i'm going to explain as well okay but as of now just follow few things which it is not required it is not your activity to perform any of these activities just for your knowledge sake this is windows server now what is next to learn that particular thing only you are doing all these things okay so this consider forget about all these things just remember this as soon as when you launch you will be able to see this particular thing okay okay and first things first okay uh, click on add role okay like this computer is now pure like windows 10 like operating system only because you haven't installed anything on top of it you want this server to be acting like some you know some server okay now let me know what kind of server features you can install on this okay so you want to give a role a role to this particular machine okay now let us see what kind of roles just click next 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 okay now okay so this computer can act like you know uh, active directory you know what is active directory will come to know in some time and dhcp what is the purpose of dhcp anyone yes sir it's like uh, assigning the ip address dynamically dynamically to the clients which are connected to it correct right okay which are connected to it okay let it be now that is like you know to assign the ip address to its you know child computers okay or the which are connected to its network not network i can say to its uh, to all the computers within its range okay yeah so now this is a dns dns means what domain name system what for what purpose it is used assigning the domain name no then? okay all the clients if they have any queries okay now as i said one more thing your organization might be having one dns server that's what i was telling right okay if they need uh, to resolve any domain name to ip address okay they don't go to the isp if you have created dns okay it will go to where to that particular dns whichever it is configured on your machines got it right okay now let me dns is nothing but domain name to ip address conversion so it will check in its network properties that what is the dns it is configured on those machines okay so now this is acting like dns or means its clients can ask what is the you know to resolve any domains 
domains uh, domain like you know domain name to ip address it can resolve it for its clients like if they come up with google.com oh you want google ip address i i can actually provide you that kind of capability it will provide got it right okay and if there is any network policy and access like you want to you know who has to access um whether internet or not or any other such things you can use that particular thing also you can deploy that particular you know server also on the same windows server or this web server ias web server also you can deploy okay um, hypervisor means like you know multiple computers uh, if you want to allow uh, to access like you know physically you want to partition them and they can access this computer or something like that all those things okay um and all your patches or anything uh, you want to deploy it from here that also so many things are there so remote desktop services to be configured for all the computers you can do it from here also okay but as of now i have installed you know three things here okay one is active directory i have installed simple way it is just click next see and it will ask what are the dependencies related uh, some features you want or anything you can like select which are if it is uh, uh, any important feature for me dotnet 3.5 is important that i have selected okay then i have uh, you know whatever the remaining options which selected by default um, i did not touch them okay uh, see something like that okay and it will ask for add features okay then i'll click on next okay then if i click next okay then if i click next okay and click next click next okay so it is asking you know you want uh, all these things to be there or not like that it is asking i said like you know okay common http features i want for http logging also i need some logging tools everything let it be okay i might be like deploying but as of now you know this much uh, is enough okay uh, basic authentication something okay uh, let it be ah maybe next i click i might click install okay so they will start getting installed okay so now this feature earlier what and all features i have deployed i have deployed active directory dhcp dns these are the features which i have deployed okay these are the you know features means these are like services okay and file transfer and all are already there okay by default okay now it is getting installed slowly after getting installed you will be able to see you know here along with active directory ad means active directory dhcp dns you get some more one more service called as you know iis service also you will get it here okay after, apart from file file server this red means something problem but usually you will be having some other other problem all the time okay um okay let it be we are least bothered about that particular thing okay now first i have installed active directory okay active directory okay now first of all what is meant by active directory okay so let me show <clears throat> mm -hmm. come on okay yeah. so when i created active directory okay it asked me you know something okay hey i want to create active directory means when i am installing right that time it asked a name hey, what is the name you would like to give to your active directory i said r boya r boya then dot local i have given that should be my domain 
that should be my domain okay like you know amazon.com kind of thing okay uh, it is not like a website but it is a domain usually this is how it will be in your offices also it will be arboya dot local okay this is a thing okay i have created a domain controller now okay means like you know where uh, you created first a domain and the, under that domain what i wanted is i have you know uh, this is a domain controller okay okay this is a domain controller okay so this is a domain controller okay dc what is a domain controller name or boya dot local some name just i have given dot local you can give anything but the same whatever you have given should be given to when you are adding the uh, computers or systems to this okay so this is some other information ntds settings that is something is there which even many of them even i also doesn't know because it is out of our you know context remember first i have created a domain okay domain i have created okay leave it okay its name is this one and it is it has come here then uh, why i am showing it here is like you know uh, a domain gets created under that active directory and all other things can be you know added to it under that only this active directory came now okay so now what i have done is i have seen the computers here okay let me see this i have one computer added to this domain i have one computer added to this particular domain okay let me just uh, is it added completed yeah it is successful let me show you uh, that feature also whether it is added or not see now it is like created a web server as well later i can host some websites on this computer like html page i can deploy and i can access from within the network itself as of now because this domain is accessible from within the you know um, within this particular uh, domain itself because you don't did not add any higher level domain like you know you did not buy godaddy from do, website i website name from godaddy or big rock or someone okay this is just uh, you know the local domain you can create and within this you know three four systems which you are connected to this domain from there you can access that that operation is also completed that website is also i have not uh, created it but the server capability i have given to it now you can host a website here and remember one thing a computer can act like as only active directory as one computer and another you know this i mean like only uh, active directory as one server uh, domain uh, domain control as one server dhcp and as another server dns as another server iis as another server like that okay you can create you know multiple servers for multiple features for them multiple servers also here setup issues uh, i mean like you know limited resources so in one single server only i have created all those things okay just remember that okay now uh, let me you know i have shown you you know the computers i have one computer here let me show you okay, okay. let me show you uh, <clears throat> this is a windows server or not this one is windows server or not guys is this windows server or not yes sir is it yes, windows sir. server is it this one is windows server huh? it's machine uh, yeah. okay. it's <laughs> normal workstation right right yeah. yes sir. it's not yeah. windows server okay so these are all like you know childs for the like i would like to this is the parent and i would like to add as a child okay now system properties computer name change okay 
if you see here i would like to add this computer say give me a second Give me a second, guys. Okay. okay, let me add that. Better, let me add that. Properties. Okay. Advanced system configurations. Go to the computer name. Change name. Let me add this to. Um, okay, this, this this first computer name change it to node two. Okay, tell me what is that domain? Rago dot local. Uh, R boya dot local. R boya dot local. I want to add node computer name node two. Okay, computer name node two two. Which one? Arboya dot local, you know, domain. You have to select this. It will be by default or group. Change this to this one. Then now you see, I change the computer name for our simplicity. Just click OK. Okay, it will ask me, hey, was you want to get added over there? Let me know you are, you know, this thing. Username and password. Now, if I am an admin, I will be adding this particular server's servers credentials here. Administrator. Okay. Administrator. Okay. Wait for a second. So now I have added one computer to this particular domain, okay? And where it will get added? Under its active directory. Means active directory is the directory which takes care of what computers are added to what domain of an organization. I can say welcome to Arboya. Uh, dot local domain that's what it said okay let it be some error comes i don't mind okay okay now i have to it is asking me to restart okay and before i do restart i would like to do you know open network connections okay ethernet change adapter one thing now you belong to which network you belong to our boya dot local correct right okay so if you are belonging to that okay guys one thing you have to remember if you are belonging to that that particular computer's ip is that particular computer's ip is means this is the you know the 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 ip address of your windows server got it right okay now whatever the ip address of the windows server whatever the ip address of the windows server will be your dns will be your dns it doesn't go to automatically it will go to your windows server okay now keep it the ip is also assigned by your you know your your windows server only okay okay now let it be restarted just restart this computer okay now you have added that okay you have added that particular computer now in pictorial representation what you have done is this is a domain okay now so for example this is uh, okay okay this is one domain okay and you have a computer in that particular domain okay added to it okay and now 
it's controlled it's controlled by that particular you know can be managed this computer thing related things can be managed by this whatever the domain controller do that's why it is called as domain controller okay so let us see how and where it has come okay now it has restarted okay don't get confused but many of you needs you know this kind of information very much required <coughs> it is not rocket science or anything just remember what is a domain group of computers correct right and without adding them to a server they cannot be clubbed as a domain correct right first you create a server okay like dns dhcp active directory whatever the names they ask and all you just add when you are installing okay but you have to give a name to the domain here in this case arboya.local is the domain which i have given okay and next now you have uh, what i have done i started adding a computer to it to add a computer to it i should be pointing to that particular domain so that's why i changed my dns to that particular thing for ip address or for dns or for any other things i will be pointing to that my as my home computer i my i am pointing to that dns now okay if i need anything i'll be pointing to that okay so give me a second i have entered the password okay now i have one more computer here got it right this is a node 2 this is a node 2 now what i can do with this node 2 right click manage means i i whatever the computer just you know is available what i can do let us see come on man okay Mm. it's taking a lot of time now this where is it okay go here come on. so i have these computers added i'm just trying to manage i would like to show you uh, can you verify that the network is okay some issue let it be not a problem properties manage give me a second we might be like doing some issue with this uh okay firewall not here not this particular one the endpoint firewall whether anything got enabled or something like that i have to see that firewall i have to disable firewall because uh, uh, in offices how come it is possible uh, like you know without allowing you you are just disabling firewall means now everyone can actually Uh, get into this uh, uh, computer right so that's why what they will do is they will be yeah i'll be turning off okay and let me check once this uh, what do you say uh, ip this one is ip config and this cmd ip config this is a client oh okay so this is again going back to the same thing okay that is the reason it is not able to okay let it be nothing to worry just go here change adapter options go here properties ipv4 it is there it is there it is there then 
why is it coming this way why is it coming okay okay let it be 192 dot i will be giving 168 dot 1 dot 102 is some ip which i have given something some issue dhcp is not working there but i don't mind i will be giving 192 dot 168 dot 1 dot 101 by any chance now mm. come on it is dying network and internet options it is connected now okay DHCP or anything, whatever it is. Now, let me IP config. Now I have kind of pointed to that ping google.com. Okay, come on. DNS. Let me check. I, I haven't, you know, created the actual DNS, but it is, you know, now for everything it is going there, but it is like, you know, the configurations which are there here, okay, whatever the firewall rules or anything might be stopping it. But now let me check the computer name, whichever it was facing some issue is still available or not, okay. Um, so now the computer name, what it is, go here. <clears throat> go to my PC, properties, system, sorry, computer, change, node 2 is there, cancel it. Go here, let me check once. Manage. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Why is it, man? Okay, let it be late. Let me create one more new VM by the time. Okay, not creating the VM. Let me add one system itself. Some network management. Okay. 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 Example here, I would like to add one user. Okay. Uh, let me create a new. Let me check whether we can add computer. Okay. Something. Not computer, add a user, new user anywhere it is there. Okay, new user, let me add. In the server, I am adding some user. Okay, test is the username, account. Okay, username is test1. Okay, test1 at the rate rboya.local is my domain, whatever is right. It is not email account. It is just like, you know, domain account. Now I'm clicking next. Some password related things it is asking. Yeah, I'm giving the password. I am creating an user in Active Directory. I have told many number of times Active Directory is used for creating the users in office. They don't go to the each and every PC and create a username and password. What they will do is they will create a default password. When the employee comes, they might be enable this option. User must change a password at first log and at next login. 
this password will be given it to the customer I mean, like the user the user joins the company and he'll be getting the password he will go and sit in front of his computer whichever it is assigned to him and where like this you know something happened and if it should be never expire means it is like you know what kind of account it is if it is password never service. expires means hmm? service account service account okay so i shouldn't be enabling this okay so this finish it is done okay take some uh, other computer within the domain let me try let me try i am facing some issues but let me uh, try this particular thing um, what i'll do is uh, i will be you know uh, log off is not there okay input control all del oh. give me a second something ah. Cancel input. Okay. Uh, switch user. Okay. Okay. Now other user I will go. Test one. Okay. And the password. See this. The account I created on the server but when within the domain i have i was able to you know log in this is the main power of you know the active directory is it clear for everyone now at least to that extent hmm? yes everyone. yes, sir. yes hmm? sir nothing else is there okay i was like you know bringing to that particular point only from that time Okay, it is, you know, like, you know, creating a, a, a space for you within the same computer that, you know, oh, you want to log in as Mr. Let me first validate whether you are the Mr. Raghav or not. Because that Raghav and username and password as a new employee and I joined under the domain, okay, under the one group or domain, okay, I've added you and, you know, uh, give me a second. Under this particular, you know, domain, once I added you, okay, now you as a test account, as a new user added here, okay, there are like, you know, administrator is there, guest is also there, some other, you know, some other users are also there, which is like comes along with this particular, you know, as soon as when you create a domain, automatically these things comes okay but remember if i want to add thousand people i can add okay i like you know under this domain these many people another domain will be there within your organization itself under that similar kind of you know things will be there there also you can add come like if you want to manage the computers if you want to manage the computer let me check once again man Okay, some problem. Okay, let me do one small thing. So this is the uh, account which we have, uh, you know, created. Uh, let me close this uh, power off this particular one. Let me create, let me go to this one. Okay, start this. Okay, <clears throat> let me try one, one, one more time that one. Okay. Maybe with new VM, I'll try. Okay. Okay. Let it be. I don't want this. Okay. So <clears throat> now this particular uh, thing is called as a domain. Okay. This particular thing is a domain. And under the domain, okay, you can like you have something called as, you know, Active Directory where you can create the users, you can manage the computers. Managing the computers means, is it possible for you to go and check, uh, hey, this particular computer, I would like to give only 40 GB of space to him. Okay. I want to give only, even though it is hard disk is uh, 100 GB, 
I would like to give only 40 GB. Just go here, click manage. Okay, you get all the properties. In that, go to the disk usage, and you can just you know change those settings, whatever it is there. Like you know the same thing what you see it on other computers, right? Same way you will see here, disk utilities, disk properties, or something like that. Okay, so go here, go here. I think this will come directly when I click it. Oh, this is another one. Don't think that this is the same one. Think it is another another one. Another I have uh, replicated so many virtual machines within the same server. I mean, like within the same. Okay, uh, last batch they didn't have this flexibility of showing installing these servers and all because like you know those machines were very uh, which I was using was very old. This is little, you know, advanced one. I can have nearly, you know, eight to minimum eight cores I have. Okay. okay. So now what I'll do is first let me disable the firewall for this computer. Do it one by one. Okay. I would like to show you those properties, how you can change also. Uh, Not change firewall settings. Defender firewall. Come on, man. Turn off firewall settings. Turn off, turn off, turn off. Okay. 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 Good. It is already turned off. Okay. Go here. And next, go to the properties. Maybe I might have done something wrong here. Ethernet change adapter settings. Ah, it is already a system. Okay. 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 It is already created. I never created this. And by mistake. I don't know. Let me check the computer name. Go to this properties, system properties, node one. Yeah, now it will come. Okay, now it will come. Nothing to worry. This one I have already, uh, you know, created it yesterday. Okay, I have done all those things. Now the computer is also up. Okay, now let me security package. What is this man? What is this man? Okay, it is opened man, sorry. So this is the one, okay. So this is the computer which is like, you know, what did I, what did I do after launching it? This my computer, uh, you know, this I have whichever it is there. Node one already I have created, right? That one I would like to manage that computer uh, by sitting from here. Okay, so this is the one. I can, you know, change their, uh, you know, task manager related things. Okay, event viewer. Okay, security. Mm -hmm. What man? Anything? Turn off. So this is the one. Hmm. I think now we should be able to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still something. Some error. Unable to access node one. Could be this could be some issue. So this should be the thing. Okay, I don't know. Some issue is there because we are not administrators. I even I don't know what is the issue and what is the error. I was just creating the setup. Maybe I'll clear all these setups next time because we need a lot of logs from these. The same logs will pump it to Splunk and all later point of time. 
but let me like you know fine tune this systems now you are able to see all the task manager event viewers okay okay device manager okay um, you know disk manager and uh, other services and applications everything you can actually control from the server okay it is asking network connection okay what is the user username username give me a second uh, ie user okay ie user okay ie user password is incorrect yeah. Uh, I don't know. Something node one local system did not recognize your, your username. Okay. R boya dot local. Is this the correct one? Because when you are Okay, I don't know, some problem. Okay, let it be. I don't want to waste this any more time. Okay, now, by now you should have glad the clarity on, okay, why we have this particular, you know, account got created, first of all. The domain account, first you have to create on the server. Under that, you'll be adding the various users to them. Or you can add the computers, like, you know, some, you just go and cre start creating the machines. As soon as when the user comes, right, this there is like, you know, nothing like they can go and sit and they can work from anywhere. That time, just start creating, adding the users, new users, like, you know, new contact also you can create, new everything, all these things, new printer or new shared folders, everything you can create, okay? But for us, you know, new user I have created. And from whichever the machine, if you want to just log into that particular machine, if you just log into that particular machine, say, for example, as I've shown you, like, you know, just go and log off and just log in, you will be able to log in because you are within that particular domain, okay? And also you can manage those computers from the domain controller itself. And all your login and logout events, if you want to push, you can push it to the, you know, if you are logged in, definitely you need not to collect one thing, all of you guys, one thing, please remember this very, 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 very clearly. Okay, user login, when it happened, when logout happened, is it required for you to keep a track? Is it required? Yes, sir. From every computer, you need to, I mean, like, gather it now? Yes. No. From only Active Directory is enough. Because okay. whoever is logging in, they are coming and getting authenticated at the... Active where? Directory. Active Sorry. Directory, right? Yes. Okay. So, no need to, you know, already here also security event logs are there. Event viewer logs are there got it right here also all of them are getting recorded all of them are getting recorded okay it will take some time okay all of them are getting recorded okay okay give me a second details okay In the xml format yeah Okay. here also like you know whatever the accounts we have okay all of them so this is a domain controller okay uh, login type 3 is there uh, let me little make it okay 
So someone has actually uh, logged in here. Okay, event ID Microsoft. Computer name, yeah, this one. DC dot within my computer itself. Okay, someone has tried to log in into the computer. Okay, say some four six three four. Someone has logged off. You saw that particular thing, right? That time I have logged off from the computer on another computer on the host. Okay, that also got recorded. Okay, all these information will be getting recorded on one single, you know. Uh, on one single mission, uh, on some, one single mission, and if they would have like you know spe special privileges logged in, okay, so they might have you know uh, uh, entered the username and passwords which I have created on this particular you know uh, Active Directory, and the the person is logging from somewhere, okay. Now authentication is happening uh, from there, correct, right? So. So there are few, all these things are getting recorded, okay? And uh, things you have to remember is, please think that domain as a, you know, environment. In that environment, um, if it is a very big environment, small, small environments will be created, small, small domains will be created. If it is a small uh, environment, okay, uh, one domain only will be created. Under that domain, uh, all the computers will be added to that particular domain so that we can easily manage those uh, computers. And also, no need to go and add, create an user for each and every computer. Just take one Windows machine from the network only. You can just you know install them from remotely. And then OS is ready. Let the employee come. By that time, you have created one account for him. Just share those default credentials with him. Next time, if you want, you can change passwords, that kind of options we can enable when it has to expire and all. Okay, so now once he logs in, you need not to, you know, uh, uh, create a local account over there. If today is working here, he can go to some other location. From there also, he can start working there as well. Okay, so this is the main thing about the uh, domain. Okay, Active Directory, okay and the dns all these things which are there they installed on that particular you know the server now at least whatever i've explained in that at least 10 15 percent you guys were able to understand <clears throat> i want that much only there should be something like you know the windows server for what purpose they are going to use is it clear for you guys or not at least to the high level, I don't want you guys to create or anything, nothing. It's not at all our duty. Is that at yes. least to that extent, all of you yes, guys? Yes. Everyone? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Confirm? Okay. So yes. what is the difference in between Active Directory and Domain Controller? What is meant by Domain Controller when someone asks? What you will say? simple okay domain controller is you know kind of a logical area okay or logical you know domain where one or more computers will get added to that particular domain that much you tell them okay active directory is okay is the location okay from where you can manage the computers got it right you can like this active directory users and computers like domain related domain related computers and users you can manage okay got it right okay so this is like you know one bc okay fine okay you can control the computers of that particular domain using the domain control okay Hmm. Okay, fine. Let us uh, go back. Okay, let me stop this. Okay. So you clicked on login request. That is what it went from here. Whether it is Windows or web or you can create anything. See, 
it is not that windows machines only you will be creating or that username and password means he might be a web user also he might be like you know your website internal website user or he might be you know some not only windows computer some linux computer or ios computer also anything whatever it is okay what they will do check whether the authentication credentials with you know some the uh, active directory or anything you know this will go here and then after that if it is not passed goes to you know uh, back to the user saying that you are not authorized user if it is passed it will go to you know some database something like that okay just remember like that but now let me open this okay so uh, where it is okay so what i would like to say is the authentication uh, on you know any uh, active directory happens you know uh, three ways first one is ntlm okay and it is challenge based okay second one is just credentials based where the domain name, active directory domain controller will be used to authenticate whether the username is correct or not okay and this and this uses you know uh, this is like you know what is the difference in between ntlm and ldap what is the main problem with them is uh, they send and receive the data in plain text like telnet okay so it is not advisable for us to use the plain text based authentications because at, um, the 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 users whatever in ntlm pure plain text here ldap it is like you know hashes when i am sending it i will be sending the password whatever i have entered i will be converting it into the hash and then i'll send in between if someone captures that hash it is just some 20000 combinations or 2000 algorithms are there in them if you put within like another next 5 days you will be able to get the exact word okay so <clears throat> now next so this is like you know if someone ask you what is the difference in between you are also entering the username and password here also you are entering the username and password what is the main difference means here in this particular case even though if it is ldap even though if i am sending the password in on a non encrypted format but i am converting the password into a hash and sending it for authentication that is what you have to remember okay uh, and in http in ldap we have used something called as like encryption like a, a, a tc a tls security we have used that also you can tell by increasing the security you know now the authenticators it's hard for them to you know crack it now the third one is has come called as kerberos kerberos is nothing but think it as like a story you entered into the office at 6 o'clock Ah, uh, sorry. You you entered into the office nine o'clock, okay, and you just logged in into the system. How your computer gets logged in into the system? You will be like whether to be allowed to use the computer based on, like when you enter the username and password, along with the username and password, um, one token will be sent from this computer, okay, to this particular. um uh, you know the the server only think about this to this server okay um then this client whatever it is there okay checks whether the uh, your credentials along with the token which you have brought okay is correct or not okay if it is correct then it will let you to access this particular server this is what where you want to access this server example so it will allow, allow you to access it if the token is not valid even though your credentials are correct it won't allow okay it won't allow okay simplest way i'll draw the diagram here kerberos 
is the like you know latest uh, you know the people are using this for authentication okay especially in the service you know like when there are some services to be accessed okay this is the okay take this remember this in simplest format okay don't get confused okay first of all i would like to access this server okay hmm? i would like to access this server okay okay first client request an authentication ticket first there is no authentication only okay so in this environment in this environment if you have to work you should have a ticket even though you have username and password you should have a ticket first of all okay you know, uh, in this itself uh, there is some active directory and some ticket generation software or some ticket generation software is also here itself within this computer they are working together okay they are working together just just okay these are all together same module only authentication module only okay okay now think in that way which is not mentioned over here okay which is not mentioned over here both of them are within the same client sends an authentication morning you came okay okay morning you came and uh, client request an authentication ticket from the key distribution center this is the key distribution center where remember this please in front of the interviewer they might ask you kerberos authentication process okay you have to tell both active directory and token generator together called as key distribution center key key means token token means key okay just in that way okay first client request an authentication ticket or token ticket key everything okay from the key distribution center kdc key distribution center which is nothing but your active directory plus your you know whatever that key generation thing okay the key verifies the credentials kdc first verifies the credential and sends back an encrypted tgt okay and session key the tgt is encrypted using ticket granting server that is this one only whatever okay this is a tgt ticket granting server okay this is the active directory this is a tgt entire thing key distribution center okay remember in that way only you remember when you are explaining also explain in that way only okay now immediate the client okay the client okay stores the tgt and when it expires the local session man local session man will request another tgt okay the client send the current tgt to the tgt server okay and then, okay so what happens is now they have given you the you will be asking for you know send your credentials okay and okay then they will assign you some token that is like a ticket or key okay token uh, ticket you can you have to see here they call it as ticket instead of token it's not cookie or anything kind of thing but it is not okay now every ticket will have some expiry time till that i'll use it and i i want to connect to some server i will connect it i want to connect to some printer i'll connect it i want to connect to some other computer I'll... so every computer with that only it will be you know using that token i don't next time onwards i'll i don't use username and password i'll just take that token and i'll go and connect them i don't use username and password that token is valid once after it is received from the server how long it is valid some timer they have set in that particular server now automatically okay every 24 hours if it is like gets expired okay so now that server what it will tell again to you is 
hey boss your your ticket has expired your ticket has expired your ticket has expired then immediately what you have to tell okay boss this is my old ticket which you have provided me boss this is the old ticket which you have provided me okay then it will validate that okay and it will give the new ticket for you using that again you can communicate using that again you can communicate okay is this particular part clear for you guys hmm? you want me to explain once again guys yes yes be clear one more time one more time hmm? no, no it's clear clear right First, we are using presently this type of authentication only. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So, no, it is. Uh, it is not like LDAP only. Most of the times we'll use. Yes, key also. But, uh, yeah, Kerberos also they are using yes, a lot. Yes. Yeah, yes. token based. Okay. Or ticket based. Ticket only you have to say. We have using all three still three types here because it is secure. Yes. Yes. It depends upon what assets you want to keep it in which. Yes, uh, under which one okay yes, if it is like more secured or ntlm is also there okay normal this one uh, ldap is mostly used because windows machines because ldap is the common protocol used it is also ldap is also having port numbers if someone asks you okay uh, ldap port is 368 or ldap port number okay ldap 389 okay 389 okay which uses a tcp only okay even if you want you can use udp also ldap s is 636 okay that is one thing okay then um kerberos okay Kerberos uses works on um, defining Kerberos port 464. Okay. 464. 88 or 464 only. Okay, a little bit. So this is the thing. Okay, just remember that you send like you just power down your computer. You don't know who you are, okay? Then what you'll do? You have to ask for boss, I don't have a ticket, okay? Then several response, hey, uh, along with your credentials you have sent, okay, example, okay? And then it will be, you know, sending you, okay, take this particular thing, okay? Um, this will be like, you know, um, uh, um, you know, like uh, these are my username and passwords, whatever the information you have given. And it will tell that, you know, by this time it will get expired. You make sure like, you know, everything. Yes. Then after that, you know, um, uh, I would like to, you know, uh, go and access on the server and all. All such information you will do. And then you will be, you know, um, get that particular request. And then after that, you will connect it. But the things, other things to be remembered. This gets expired after some time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then after that, what you'll do? You will be again sending the request to this particular. Uh, this this server will send a request like you know re get re-authenticated. Then that time it will send the old ticket and it will assign the new ticket if it is a valid old one. Okay. That is how it works. Kerberos. And uh, remember this response. Hey. Um, your T T this this session got expired, okay? Um, is the information which is telling to this right? Not only to this computer, to all the computers in the office, it will tell the same thing to the servers, to the computers, everything. At the same moment, they will tell, okay? At the same moment, okay, they will tell it to all the computers, okay? So that time everyone will send their old tickets to this domains to get the new tickets, to get the new tickets, okay? So this 
it happens uh, at one specific time so all the computers in the network should have the same timer okay if there is this computer is having different timer then it will think that oh some attacker is actually doing trying to access my token something like that it will think and it will reject that request by that you know you won't be properly synced and uh, you you have to again ask for the new request and all the process you have to follow okay, okay. so that kind of problems also they'll face so kerberos is a ticket based authentication okay um that you have to remember okay is that clear to everyone first things first guys is that clear yes everyone yes sir yes sure yes sir 100%. yes sir then don't tell sir i did not remember that thing during the interview i forgot about it no no need to prepare again for these kind of things okay just to flow remember some user is there authentication he has sent a username and password okay kdc key distribution center has assigned you some ticket based on your valid username and password and you hold it okay and if there is some time if the it gets expired token will have some life span you need not to ask it again this every time it will be synchronized that the kdc only will send a request to you hey your key is expired token is going to expire now ask for a new token so you have to send a new old key and send uh, it to the kdc kdc will receive it uh, and uh, it will be responding back with the like if it is valid then it will assign a new kdc Uh, with, with new uh, ticket why that ticket is used i want to access a shared folder or i want to give a print or i want to uh, log into my you know some website local website okay for everything okay maybe it required for you to not to get authenticated but if you have a ticket uh, in kerberos in your system okay in your system cache or somewhere okay automatically if you just launch that website you might be able to access or you just select that shared folder they don't ask username and password because the it will send the uh, ticket to that particular you know um, hey i am going and ask uh, accessing this particular service then it will let you just okay go and access it that's it okay because the ticket is valid with you okay got it right hmm so that much is enough okay so let me yeah yeah go here so this is the thing okay and uh, some what all these things are there they are little advanced if you want you can uh, use them okay and so these are like you know computer management which we have seen okay um reg edit okay reg edit i don't i did not show you okay okay now what is this this is k this is you know um h key is where the your registry means like you know your systems in real time what they are actually accessing and all will be will be here okay the memory how it is going to be used for running it and everything will be here okay so it is like you know um it is the settings to run any anything on your computer it is the settings required like my operating system is there okay so my operating system is having so many things applications and so many notepad plus plus is there for notepad plus plus you know all the uh, you know the the this is the registry okay okay this is the registry and if you go to the mozilla firefox this is the registry some values will be there okay these are kind of you know settings okay um 
settings means like you know earlier we used to have a program to run okay it needs a supporting document like all the configurations how we test to run is loaded using some file called as ini file i n i if still it is the same thing in i n i in in linux and uh, mac os linux and ios or mac os okay so this uh, let me show you what is ini file i'll give you so that you will get what is the difference between um registry and ini init init yeah initialization file okay init files or ini files or anything okay ooh, 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 ooh. what man Oh. Okay, let me. This tree neat is not there. Okay. Windows. Mm -hmm. Static variables like where it has here. So just think whatever the dot ini files in Linux is also the same thing in registry but ini files it's like you know headache kind of things when it comes to the linux and all but windows has given like you know created an, an excellent way of organizing those whatever the settings related information how it can communicate with the processor and all okay in a excellent way using something called as you know uh, uh registries okay so these registries will have you know all the information that is required for a particular application or a process or anything that requires to be run is there if a person logs into the system okay if a person logs in into the system let me show you one important thing here okay um let me take uh, now what is the this is the one right okay this is the one uh, this is the one of the virtual machine which is there on this particular computer on this computer correct right okay I, what is this okay on this computer you found this okay uh, let me just check oh god time Yeah, okay. Uh, special login is there. Is there by any chance? Okay. This particular virtual machine has got some ID. Okay. S1518. Got it right? See this particular one. And let us see one more virtual machine. let us see one more event these are all called as sids okay every computers when it is gen like you know will have an sid okay that is like you know operating system based it will give you some information okay log on security Take this, okay. Take this details. Let me check. This is the 21, S21. See this, this is the 21, it is here. So all those users, whatever that information they have logged in, right? There is, those are also some computers only. Those related registries are also getting loaded here, okay? 
those users whatever they have done those things also those operating system within the operating system itself i have virtual machines so those things also will get you know get loaded here those registries also because it is in my host computer only correct right so that will also be there if i have another one more user okay created here itself within this that users that user logs in that time that particular sid will be added okay s15 20 r21 r32 or something like that okay so user related credentials will also get not credentials runtime related settings will also get loaded all those configurations okay and you know whoever is logged in right those things will get loaded here okay all the user uh, like you, you have i have so many users if i go here current user as of now i have logged in as raghav right his related information is like you know admin. whatever my credentials with which i have logged into main system means my main windows 10 laptop right those things will be loaded here okay yeah okay. their hardware related things security related things everything is here so registry is all like you know runtime related uh, data which is required for your computer or the applications or the services to run will be getting loaded in this registry so that the computer can work function properly so earlier the same technology is called as you know initialization dot ini where all the settings and everything used to be there whenever a program gets when you run first ini has to be like to be loaded and then the programs will be successfully executed so but now in windows they have changed it to Uh, something called as uh, registries where they have properly organized in just you know key value based you know something like this okay if you insert a pen drive that will also get updated over here i will show those things later okay because we don't require for them now if you insert a cable mouse or anything all of them will get you know get reflected over here on this particular thing okay so just remember that okay so that is about uh, uh, you know this particular uh, uh, reg edit okay you can edit those registry files also okay you know command prompt you know powershell you know so windows terminal windows terminal as i said like you know powershell is looking like this even you go to the windows machine and click on powershell click on this okay so this is the powershell okay um this powershell you know uh, can be used i have few scripts okay something need to be run okay uh, like this particular okay this script is written uh you know something uh, for some purpose okay that is like you know it it the, the script whatever here i have given is written in um, you know some kind of powershell and all okay so the scripts are there if i want i can execute those scripts from here just you know now they are executed and did something okay so this is something you know you can execute some scripts also without any issues powershell is uh, useful in that way command prompt everything you have to run in command based okay these are all like whatever i have given is like windows related commands only okay i did not give anything different like you know setting the environment variables okay and ask, asking uh, accessing some files everything okay those so very good where it is yeah go here okay so powershell is there okay command prompt these are all some information okay later i will explain registry related thing information okay now we have also seen this domain controller okay where the domain will be there and under that you can create multiple servers correct right okay it can be a file server by default it will be there on any machine okay web server like ias when it comes to windows or any other apache or 
uh, other servers which you can install apache or uh, nginx kind of servers okay um, ftp file transport protocol separately some filezilla software or something you can install and you can use it our mail server smtp okay server database like sql mysql kind of thing proxy server where all the your web traffic to be controlled when someone enters google.com the traffic first like http request i am not talking about the dns http request has to go to my uh, proxy server if it is like to be allowed website then it will go to the you know other system application server that is uh, some kind of mobile app you have created okay or you know some uh, other information uh, you know uh, like uh, say your company own application where you can register for something trainings or something that kind of application also is there those all things comes here okay and uh, yeah and this is like you know uh, you can create users and uh, as i told you groups you can create computer user i have shown you simplest way let me show the users i have shown you same way groups also nothing else uh, nothing much difference okay um, you can just go here create a new group okay you create a group uh, you know name um, say uh, hello uh, or um, boya group okay or boya instead of boya i've given boya group okay um, now let it keep you know simple okay now you have the group go here uh, just members you can add add a member we know that you know some uh, people are there example uh, what is the names which i have given let me straighter okay administrator okay administrator is added okay and r boya is also there okay r boya dot local okay okay uh, okay cancel what are the other accounts are there mm. I don't remember the names what I have given. Ah, node one. Hmm. Okay. Or what are the okay test right? That is test one right? Okay cancel add test one yeah test one okay like that all the accounts you can create okay and they are all comes under one group you can apply it okay now this group has having some people now if you are adding permissions or anything when you are doing you can add them as one group and you can like if you are giving permissions to access read write kind of things right okay in your computer say for example if i want um you know this particular pictures are there okay now our documents are there okay uh, downloads anything okay take this thing only properties okay sharing okay share share this uh -huh. okay come on man okay so this one edit okay you can mm. 
you can add the group create owner create system why we don't have this permission maybe these are all like should not be i guess let me create one sample file properties yeah sharing give permissions oh. okay um what is that group name boya okay so that group i have given and i can edit the read write permissions and all then i can share it done is that clear now for you guys huh hello <laughs> you yes, guys sir. are huh? yes, yes. everyone no yes. why we are creating the groups and all means not only here if you go within the domain anywhere you can do that particular you can access that groups and all you can add them you can do whatever you want okay so that's all uh, let me check if there is anything pending okay like you know creating the users and all i have already shown you guys this creating the groups okay all these things are there nothing much required for you the condition let it be okay this much only as of now this much is too much for you guys so, you know like at least I, earlier you might not have some experience on them but now you got the fair amount of information at least what is a group okay what is a user what is a domain controller how they are going to install it okay if i say server what is they are doing over there they are just trying to install you know click next 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 kind of thing with the options like dns if i select they will do that that server will create a dns server inside it again i can go and add role and if i want dhcp you can create next 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 and all you can create it and if you want ias you can create it but that thing will have some settings you, uh, you know your network settings and all for that what it is your computer your computer which is acting like a server should be having a static ip okay should be having a static then only all the comp computers within that network should be able to communicate uh, i don't know why this one change i don't know why this one mm -hmm. okay let me clean it up later sometime okay so all those things okay so that's all for today okay i'll be sharing <coughs> this document straight away with you guys okay just go through it for now we will wrap up the windows okay <clears throat> now we, next we are going getting into the security and other aspects got it right hmm? yes is it okay yes hmm? okay sir okay thank you sir yeah yeah it's okay roger what i'm looking for to is when you pick up let's say we get an alert we get a malware on a machine mm. you walk us through the step by step the first thing where do you look how do mm. you start um, investigating mm. what logs what files what are you looking for what um are the iocs we are looking for that's i'm looking forward to that time man yes 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 you will get it uh, but uh, you know um maybe this information like you know it's very important for us as of now okay compared oh. to uh, oh. all those